Kubernetes events are broken, at least when building developer platforms is concerned. They are one of the things that prevent us from building internal developer portals that go beyond the ability to create abstractions, which work only the first day of operations. If the situation stays as it is today, platform engineers will continue being unable to build services that help developers be autonomous and will not be able to transform themselves into service providers. Ops will continue reacting to Jira tickets. Platform engineers will ultimately realize that platforms cannot be created and developers will not be able to take ownership of their applications. The world will end. Okay, that last sentence might be a bit exaggerated, so let me rephrase it. We will fail to build developer platforms if Kubernetes events continue working as they work today. Now, to be honest, Kubernetes events are not broken. They are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. They output events related to specific resources. Still, I will argue that's a wrong design choice if we are ever to move Kubernetes beyond a niche platform interesting only to a relatively small number of people. There you go. I made a bold statement that Kubernetes events are broken and you have all the rights to throw stones at me. Or you might wait for a while and give me an opportunity to explain. I will have to show you some basics you're probably already aware of in order to demonstrate the big issue all platform engineers are facing or will face sooner or later. So bear with me for a while, even if what I'll say sounds too basic for you to be interested in. We use Kubernetes events to discover what's going on in Kubernetes clusters. We can retrieve events with kubectl get events. We can also get events related to specific resources through kubectl describe commands. And here's the thing. Those are very, very, very useful, but only to people who dedicated their lives to Kubernetes. For the rest of us, for mere mortals, they are uncomprehensible most of the time. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. I have a Kubernetes cluster with a simple application running in the A-team namespace. If I list all the resources, we can see that there are pods and services and deployments and replica sets. That's all pretty standard stuff, and I can argue that most real-world applications are much more than that. Still, for the sake of argument, I will keep it simple. Now, let's say that something happened to the application. I will simulate that something by deleting the pods. Now, if I retrieve all the resources from the A-team namespace, we can see that Kubernetes fixed that something by recreating the pods. Bear in mind that I'm keeping it simple here and that there are many, many, many other cases when Kubernetes cannot auto fix issues. The point is that something happened and that I would like to find out what that something is. I can, for example, list all the events, but that output is uncomprehensible to most of us. Events in that form are useful only as a last resort. Now, I can get events related to specific resource through the kubectl describe command. I cannot get them from the pods. I delete it since those resources are now gone. So there is nothing to describe. What I can do is get them from the replica set that manages those pods. Over there, we can see that two new pods were created by the replica set. Two pods were gone and two new ones were created in their place. The system worked as expected and through replica set events, I know what happened. That's great, right? Well, the application is defined as a deployment, which in turn created a replica set, which in turn created pods. That's great because there is a clear separation of concerns. We know what deployments do, we know what replica sets do, and we know what pods are used for. But here's the question, who is we? If V is people who dedicated their lives to Kubernetes, then my previous statement was true. But if V means people who learn just the bare minimum to define their application so that they can run in Kubernetes, then I was terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. A normal person who might be, let's say, a Node.js developer will not know that pods are child resources of replica sets, which are child resources of deployments, and that they need to understand all three of those just for the sake of understanding 
what's going on when their applications are defined as deployments. Now, let's imagine that I'm that not just developer or anyone else, but a Kubernetes ninja. I would expect to learn what's going on with my application by taking a look at the events related to the resource I defined. So, if I define the deployment, I would expect to find events related to everything the deployment does in the deployment. So I, as someone other than a Kubernetes ninja, Kubernetes master, would execute something like kubectl describe deployment and I would get this. Nothing. There is no trace of the event that new pods were created as a result of someone's malicious activities. Now, you might say, you're silly. You should know that you should not look at the events of the deployment, but that you should also check events of replica sets as well as the events of pods. And my answer to that is, that's just silly. That's obvious to you because you're living and breathing Kubernetes that is not obvious to people who just want an easy way to define their applications and who did not spend years mastering Kubernetes. If you think that's common knowledge, you're living in a bubble. Now, my previous example might sound a bit silly and not really related to development portals, internal developer platforms, platform engineering, or any other buzzword I used at the beginning. I beg to differ. That example was very, very relevant and critical to all those things. Let me ask you this. What do we do when we build developer portals? We create services, we expose them through some APIs, and we build user interface in form of web pages or CLIs or VS Code plugins or whatever else we might think of. What matters is that there are almost always those three components, a backend or a service, an API, and the user interface. Kubernetes proved to be great for that. It's as if it was designed precisely for that. Services are Kubernetes controllers, APIs are extended through Kubernetes custom resource definitions, and user interfaces are dumb, since all they have to do is talk to the API. If a user interface is anything than dumb, you're doing it wrong, or you chose a wrong one to adopt. Now, I know that many do not design their platforms like that, and all I can say is that any other design is just silly. What I'm describing is Application Design 101, Backend, API, Frontend. That's the backbone of any system. Now that you got a taste of the issue with Kubernetes events with core resources, let's jump into custom resources, since those are the resources we are using to create backends and APIs for developer portals. I'm about to show an example using Crossplane. You will notice that I will be very negative even though Crossplane is the project I'm invested in. That negativity will not be really geared towards Crossplane, but Kubernetes events. Everything I will showcase through Crossplane equally applies to Cluster API, or Kubevela, or Knative, or any other custom resource in Kubernetes. They're all equally bad at showing events. None of them, as far as I'm aware of, are truly useful for platform engineering, at least not when observability is concerned. Let me show what I mean by outputting a WSSQL uh, YAML file. Here's a definition of a cross-plane claim that creates a managed database, in this case as AWS RDS. By the way, I made that one. It's easy for anyone to understand what it is. Anyone can write it. And the end result is the database with all the required details necessary to run it in production and that comply with everything prescribed in my company fictional company. Developers are happy because they can do everything themselves. People experienced with databases are also happy since they do not need to work on resolving Jira issues with requests for databases. Developers are service consumers and database experts are service providers. Now, I won't go into details about cross-plane compositions in this video. There are plenty of videos about cross-plane in this channel, so check them out. Afterwards, what matters is that I extended Kubernetes with the CRD and the controller, and now anyone can create CRs or custom resources based on it. That's how developer portals should look like. What might be missing is some kind of a UI for those who do not like writing YAML. Nevertheless, I will create that database with kubectl apply, and you will have to imagine that you can accomplish the same result by pushing it to Git if you're using Argo CD or Flux, or by filling in some fields in backstage or port if you prefer 
pretty colors. So when you see me executing kubectl commands, you should know that uh, you would get the same results through web UIs, other CLIs, GitOps, or whatever you're using. All those talk to the API and present what API gives them. They're all different representation of the same data. In other words, the user interface does not matter for this story. What matters is that there is a custom resource and that it will be applied to Kubernetes API. That was great. My mom could have written that YAML and she would also get the database. Now, let's check the status of the database by listing all claims. I can see that it is not ready. One explanation could be that it takes a bit of time until RDS, VPC, and Gateway, and subnets, and other AWS resources are created. A different explanation could be that there is something wrong. I can solve the first issue by waiting, and the other by taking a look at the events of that resource through kubectl describe. Or at least that's what I would expect to be able to do. There is nothing over there indicating that there is a problem. From the perspective of the service consumer, my claim is simply not yet ready and I should just relax, right? Well, no, wrong. It is not working and I, as a person who did not dedicate his life to Kubernetes, will never find out. Now, a person experienced with Kubernetes will know that one resource creates another resource and other resources are creating other resources which might create more resources and the story continues to infinity. That's the nature of Kubernetes. A person experienced with crossplane would just execute crossplane trace command and realize right away that there is a problem two levels, two levels below that claim. The claim created a composition which created a bunch of resources like a VPC, a few subnets, uh, quite a few others. A person who understands all those would take a look at those resources and find out what's wrong but I'm pretending not to be that person. I'm pretending to be a person who created a custom resource in hope that I can treat it as a service managed by someone who does understand those things. I am a Node.js developer and not a Kubernetes ninja or a crossplane expert. If I knew everything about everything, I would list SQL since uh, one was created uh, from that claim. Then I would describe that SQL composition to find out which resources it created. And I would list all managed resources to find out which ones are misbehaving. And I would describe, let's say, the VPC to see what's wrong with it. And I would finally see that provider config was not found. From there on, I would realize what's wrong and fix the issue. But what I described does not work. If I knew all that, I would not need the initial resource in the first place. I could have created all of those individually. Someone built higher level abstractions precisely to avoid going down to low level resources. In other words, the person who created that abstraction created it so that users of that abstraction do not need to deal with all that or do not even know how to deal with them. Hence, either I know all that and I do not need the abstraction I used or I don't. In the latter case, I cannot be expected to know the things I don't know and that I'm not supposed to know. If the goal is to enable people to create services that can be consumed by others, we need to do better. We need to enable people not only to run applications and databases and servers and whatever else we are trying to enable them to do, but also to observe the state of those resources at the right level of abstraction. If I create something called SQL claim, whatever that something is, I would expect it to provide me not only with the information about its status, but also to show me what's wrong with it so that I can fix it if that something was caused by me, or to give me an indication that the problem is global and that I should notify someone else to fix it. Otherwise, what's the point of someone investing time, considerable time, to create services for developer portals if those services are providing only the happy path and which fail to inform me, users, when there is something wrong and help users to correct mistakes? Now, to be clear, one more time, this is not the problem specific to Crossplane. I'm only using it as an example. It is the problem of how Kubernetes events work. Each resource outputs its own events. VPC, in my example, did show the correct events that told me right away what's wrong. But I did not create a VPC. I created a claim, which created a composite resource, which created, among other things, the VPC. From my perspective, there is only the claim 
and I would expect it to show me what's wrong with it. Now, some projects and services are trying to solve that problem by aggregating logs and events and trying to show them all in some graphical user interface. That's wrong. That's the case of someone trying to solve a problem by creating a workaround instead of solving it at the root. And the root is how Kubernetes events work. What's missing is events propagation. If resource B was created by resource A, events of the resource B should have been propagated to the resource A. That way I, creator of the resource A, who is oblivious of the resource B, would know what's going on. That would solve the issue and would make developer portals so much more usable, right? Well, still no, still wrong. It's a bit more complicated than that. You see, I don't need all the information of all the child resources since that would be overwhelming. That would produce the same outcome I mentioned earlier. I don't know everything about everything, so I'm using an abstraction. I expect to be able to observe that abstraction with all the relevant information but not more. So I cannot be blind without any events from the low level resources, but I also shouldn't be overwhelmed with everything. What I need is something in the middle. The person who designed the resource definition and the controller, the abstraction, should be able to decide which events should be propagated further up from low level resources to the abstraction, the services, and which should stay where they are. To put it in other words, the service designer should make decisions which events are valuable to the consumers and which ones are not. We don't have that in Kubernetes today, nor in any of the projects I'm aware of. Events are not propagated to parent resources, so consumers need to deal with both higher level abstractions and low level resources. As a result, developer portals built on top of Kubernetes are useful only for day zero. They can help developers run something, but when things go wrong, developers are either blind or overwhelmed with information they do not understand. Now, to be clear, being able to accomplish only a part of the mission is better than nothing. Being able to run abstractions without being able to observe them is better than not being able to do anything. Still, I feel that the situation with the events is the critical next issue to tackle in Kubernetes or projects running on top of Kubernetes. Without giving the right information at the right level of abstraction, internal developer platforms will never be able to move beyond happy paths. I feel that Kubernetes events should propagate upwards. Please let me know in the comments if you have a creative solution to the problem. You must have faced it if you're building a developer portal or an internal developer platform. If you created abstractions of some form or another, you must have reached the problem of enabling your users to observe the state of that something without forcing them to go into low-level details. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.